Hey, right, so this is question 16, so it's in section 2, 2015 paper. So these questions are always the bigger questions, and it's a mixture of the two units. Now, what we've got here is a template that shows the consistency, provides consistency of colour, style, and size of text, identify other features that aids good user interface design. So if you have a wee look up here, hopefully you'll a lot of it kind of jumps out. You've got the same kind of colour schemes used, so there's a consistency in colour scheme. These elements, like the buttons and even the graphics, they're all consistent in terms of the size as well. Also, look, if you see a question like this, you might find maybe a wee bit down here in which it talks about increasing the text font size or the colour, so that would aid accessibility. But obviously you can only actually mention what you can see here. So I would be really thinking about consistent colour scheme. Okay, so consistent colour scheme. I'm going to reduce the thickness of this. And also we can just say what about Buttons, um, buttons are the same size. So you can see there's all these interactive elements such as the buttons. Okay, they're all the same size, and that would get you your marks there. Okay, so you could even circle just to make sure that you're you're looking at everything right. But that's essentially you're too much for that. So consistent colour scheme and these elements such as your buttons and these graphics are all the same size as well. We also talk about it's an appropriate navigation because it's easy to actually for the website it's good for the website it's easy to work your way through it and obviously that's good interface design. Explain why web pages appear in the same in each browser okay so remember when you're writing HTML so imagine you you wrote this is your wee tag and then you had hello. When you're actually writing your HTML you're you're not just writing the content of it, you're actually writing down the formatting because it's actually HTML that contains the data to do with the actual appearance of it, not the browser. Okay. So explain why the HTML determines The appearance. To help if I could spell appearance correct. Of the page. So we use all these tags to actually format it. Okay, so that's what the HTML is there. So that's the content of it, but also the formatting as well. Then give you a wee structure of files that you might have in your My Documents, but obviously still in a web page. So this is a web server that will contain all these, and they're talking about the photograph of the home page is stored in a folder called Images, and we've got a JPEG, so that's a standard file format. It's an image that can be opened up in different computer systems. Other ones, uh, you could say something like GIF. Uh, you could say Bitmap as well. Even got things like PNG now, it's more common. So these are examples of standard file formats. State the type of addressing that should be used to include the file image one on the index page. Okay, so you got image one, and that's in the images folder, and that's all relating to where it's going to be stored or addressed from this index. So they're all within the same folder of products, so they're related in a way to each other because they're stored in this folder called product. So we could actually just use relative addressing. Okay, this one is one in which you need to just keep on practicing, right? But they're asking you about you've got an image and it's always useful just just sketch out the image, right? So it is six inches by four. 
Okay, now this is one of the trickier ones because they're wanting you to think it's got 600 dots per inch and a color depth of 24. So we need to work out how many pixels, right? So these dots are pixels. So what we want to do is work out how many pixels along the way and then how many pixels down the way. Okay, now to do that, what we need to do is we've got six inches along the way and for each inch it's 600. So that's six times 600. And then times that by 4 times 600. Okay. That gives you... All that is one mark. So then what you'll do... Again, you'd need to be using a calculator for this, right? And I don't know why I went into that one. Right, so if I open up a calculator. So that's 6 times 600. And then times... 4 times 600 and that gives you the number of pixels 4 times 64 I think I had 4 zeros just double check yeah. and that's the number of pixels but we want to work out for each pixel we're using 24 bits so we times that by 24 and that will give you the actual number of bits, okay? And that gets you another mark. So if you go times 24, that's 7, sorry, 20736. That's 2, 20736. And that gives you the number of bits. And that gives you, oops, that gives you a second mark. Then what we have to do is we have to, Divide that by 8 to get to the number of bytes. Divide it by 1024 to get to the number of kilobytes. And 1024 again to get to the number of megabytes. So what we would end up doing is we would have that. Divide by 8. That gives you a number of bits. Because number of bytes. Divide by 1024. That gives you a number of kilobytes. Divide by 1024. will give you the number of megabytes. And that's your answer there. Okay, so your answer, we just round it to the decimal places. So that's going to be 24.72 megabytes. Okay, so you want to get it to an appropriate unit. Okay, so again, work out the number of bits, number of pixels along, number of pixels down. Multiply them together, just like calculating the area. This is how many bits are used to save each pixel. So we work out the number of bits and then just get it into an appropriate unit. Website contains a search engine. I'll explain how that works. Okay. Well, basically, keywords entered by user. So next time, if you use Bing or Google, but any of the words you're entering, known as the keywords. Okay. These are matched. against a database full of pages. Against a database of known pages that contain the keywords. That's how it works. You enter the keywords for one mark, and these keywords, they're matched against a database which contains a list of other pages with the keywords within these pages. And that's just a wee quick go over of the first question in section two.